Welcome to After Hours. With me today is Roger Lubert. Roger is president of Arts Connect. He is also vice president of the Tri Cities Community Television Society, and he is also chair of the Mini Cata uh, Park Association. Welcome to the show, Roger. Thank you. No. Um, well, you wear a lot of hats, uh, but let's uh, start off talking about what Arts Connect is all about. Well, Arts Connect uh, is a regional arts council. Okay. Um, a unique one in the sense that the, this region it takes in its boundaries take in five municipalities, okay. two villages and three cities. So what is the area? Well, it's bounded by three rivers. Well, two outside rivers, Pitt River, you have the Fraser on okay. one side. So this is Coquitlam, the Coquitlam... Uh, well, it's the Coquitlam domain, historically speaking, it, okay. right? So it would be all the lands. It, yeah, it would cover quite a bit of the traditional lands of the Coquitlam. Okay. Uh, but once you get into the European settlement approach, you would get into the first uh, European Coquitlam, okay. and then multiple layers of this that follow, because okay. Coquitlam itself, Coquitlam now, which is the way the Europeans adopted the name, uh, have, and the region itself, have gone through a very interesting uh, dynamic and, and of human settlements. Okay. So that's a very strong interest that the uh, Regional Arts Council has from that perspective. But you cover Port Moody. Yes. Uh, Pope. Port, Port Coquitlam, Coquitlam. And Coquitlam, Coquitlam, and there's a couple other areas. Right. That, yeah. Well, the main, the larger cities, and in a way I cringe when I hear the word tri-cities, mm -hmm. but those are the larger cities. So Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, Port Moody, yeah. and of course, in, in our, within our region is the village of Anmore and the village of Belcara, mm -hmm. and they're unique and small and quite beautiful little municipalities in, in and of themselves. Great. And so Arts Connects has been around for quite a while, is, it, is that true? Is, yes, what, what, yes. What's the history of Arts Connect? How did well, it Arts form? Connect has a really interesting history. It's 45 years plus. Okay. Uh, it began as a need within a certain region of a bunch of creatives, artists that wanted to find a way to express themselves. And uh, from the, the earliest of incarnation, which was the Coquitlam Fine Arts Council, to then successive evolutions of names and how they branded themselves, have come to what we are and what we're known today in the branding sense, which is Arts Connect. Mm -hmm. So what kind, of, what kind of projects do you work on? Well, historically, we were, uh, you know, and I like to tell anyone that wants to hear, that we were like gardeners planting seeds okay. in a very unique territory. Uh, being a regional arts council, we inherited some interesting challenges that, for instance, you know, Burnaby has its own arts council. Well, you know, this region has a regional arts council. So uh, the projects initially were efforts between artists that got together, right, and wanted a voice, wanted a way to express their creativity, and, and went through that process and wanted to reach out, which is, by the way, what I feel I'm doing today to the, the big city. So. You know, it, it was all this kind of effort. The through time, though, as it went and moved around the region, and it did maneuver and moved around the region. So, what it left behind in the Coquitlam sense was Place des Arts, which is quite well known at a regional level now. A beautiful art, art school, uh, you know, creative environment in the old historical quarters of Mayerville. Mm -hmm. uh, quite interestingly, came out of a again where the artists come around and, and try to find expression. Uh, then we moved to Port Moody uh, and set up shop there for a while. And some of it, uh, you know, we're, I'm not going to take credit for all of what happened in that region, but we've played a role in anything and everything that's had to do with art and culture in that region, sometimes small, sometimes large. So out of Port Moody emerged the City of the Arts. And that's how they call themselves. Mm -hmm. And the, in the last few years, we've concentrated on Port Coquitlam which also is a beautiful, they have a beautiful cultural precinct. If you ever gone downtown of the Port Coquitlam, which was the first, by the way, the heart and soul of the first Coquitlam, mm -hmm. the European Coquitlam. Oh, okay. Which mysteriously, 20 years after its incorporation, petitions Victoria to separate from itself 
And now you're getting a really, <laughs> what an invitation, right, for right. an artistic mind to, to get at this and ask yourself, how, why, why yeah. how does this come about? And what resulted was successive, there was seven coquitlums that got redefined as a result of this kind of transformation of settlement. We're talking about, you know, human settlements. So uh, from an arts and cultural perspective, the, the uh, organization that I now, you know, preside over has developed a real instinct for uh, deepening the, the idea of art and culture. What do we mean by it, right? And, well, what do we mean by arts and art culture? Art and culture. Yeah. Well, it's the expression, right? It's yeah. the, for me, there's two Is things. It, are we talking visual expression? Are we talking... Uh, well, no, no, no. All, all of it. The literary arts, okay. the, uh, you know, the sculpture, the, the, you know, the, the more tactile. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a very important question to ask. What do we mean by art and culture? Because the, you know, I see it as two, two kind of waves that happens, and this has been forever. So the stories that people tell themselves, uh, is how art emerges, right, in, 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 turn, in a certain locale or a certain place. And then there's the influences from outside that comes in. Like, for instance, it's a good comparison. Vancouver and, and our world out there, we're the suburbs, right? Yeah. And so the influences gradually makes it this way. And yet, over there, we're far enough that some of our own stories were starting to be expressed in there. Like, Mayalville is a very good example, right? A, a unique little village way, you know, coming... In, in the turn of the century at the largest mill of the British Empire, a, a new workforce was imported out here, right? To right. work in the largest mill of the British Empire. So you're, you're bringing a bit of Canada way over these mountains and planting these seeds in the 1900s. Well, you're gonna have some consequence to that, right? Yeah. So, so art and culture is all of this, the expression, right? Of, of a place, sense of place, sense of belonging, sense of identity. That drives the need to tell the stories, which then drives the definition of what art and culture is. Well, how, how many people are in your group? Our group itself, well, we have an extended reach after 45 years of about 1,500 to 2,000, okay, in terms of a reach. Now, mm -hmm. in, in terms of the group are, itself... These are artists that you're working with? or No, no, they're, they're by just, extension the, okay. the communication reach that we've had over 45 years, right? For instance, some of the original members are life lifers. They're lifetime honorary members of the organization. Are, are these people artists themselves, or? Well, or? They, they yes, definitely. As a matter of fact, one of the founders, of, you know, is is still around very much creating art. Others have a love of art, and so what they've done is they've nurtured, right, and piloted the the, uh, I say, the governance part of arts. Connect what we know now as Arts Connect. So, so there's been elders now that are the wise elders that have you know kept an eye on on the evolution of what was a self-created organization to serve a region, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, that region takes its identity and its in, in its boundaries through the school district 43, which I kind of like because it's like the little red schoolhouse concept of a long time ago, and somehow that you know this notion of human settlements, which I love we can repick up the idea of story. When you say human settlements, what do you mean by that? Well, it's this whole notion of, uh, at first, where, where do we as humans, where have we historically settled, okay? Right. So for thousands and thousands of years, they have proof now about four to 5,000 years of settlements of Quaquitlam itself. Uh, a, a, you know, a very deep and, and real uh, presence in this territory where we are now. And then, of course, the human cells is what flowed from it, right? So always the rivers at first, you know, provided the, the roads to settlement for life, water, and all this. And then, of course, if you had, like the West Coast had, which was great bounty of resource, you could develop a, a cultural feel and a cultural expression, which they did, Yeah. right? So how exactly did you get involved with Arts Connect yourself? Well, I attended a great meeting one time, uh, an, an annual general meeting, and I was very impressed by the, uh, this organization at the time. They had brought in Max Weinman, uh, and he was just launching a book at the time, and he hadn't even printed it and published it, and we were going to be hearing from this guy, a great author, and uh, the name of his book escapes me right now, but it, it was very fascinating uh, in terms of to meet an author, and he was presenting a concept of a book before it even was going to get published, and it eventually got published. 
so I was so impressed with the, 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 the creativity from this organization that I uh, got onto the board and stayed there for quite a while. You know, and got involved just looking, listening, hearing what this organization was about, what, what, the, what the region was about, because what I discovered, I could get a real picture of that region through this organization. For instance, there's 45 years of archives that we have, uh, physical archives that, that are really valuable, especially today as we now go into production from a point of view of our own television program. We have content. We have the beginnings of the art expression, the stories from each of these unique human settlements. Mm -hmm. Come back to what do I mean by human settlements, right? They are the incarnation of people getting together. At first, you know, more or less just uh, unorganized and then having a sense of conscious enough to go and get incorporated and thus you have five of these that emerged and then you have Quaquitlam with all of its years still there which is also a deep deeply embedded rooted human settlement so yeah so these are very fascinating to me from a, a storytelling point of view right so when you say archives what what are you like are you setting up like a library of uh, art displays and well, the archives in our case are all the efforts that we've established with these various settlements, human settlements, in terms of, uh, from an art and cultural perspective. So is this like a video archive you're talking about? Or well, there are some of that, or, or but initially it was more just the efforts and the protocol that got established with okay. each of these entities. And then, of course, the support that was developed with them, some of them, and we start getting grants from the respective cities in terms of services we start bringing in. And I can give you an example of some of them. So for Coquitlam, uh, at one phase, we brought in what, what is a very world-class kind of a, uh, a concept, the Pecha Kucha, it's called. And it's really bringing together and discovering the creatives of a region. So we brought this into Vancouver, sorry, to uh, Coquitlam in this case, uh, at the Evergreen Cultural Center. It's kind of a cultural hub there, beautiful theater. And uh, we did 10 of these uh, efforts and they were, it, it's a happening kind of, if you want to use the word for it, it's, it's creatives coming together and discussing and uh, displaying their idea or concept and the audience is there discovering these creative minds. So it's an awakening, basically. It's a way to, and, and by the way, we, we heard of it through a Vancouver Pecha Kucha. So there's well, the influences what, what that What is come. Pecha Kucha? Is it, do you know what that Yes, means? yes, it's, it's a, a formula. It's, it's first of all, it, it's, it's a creative concept that came from architects initially from Japan, which had a, a need to share their expressions and you know, their ideas and their concepts architecturally. Mm -hmm. But eventually, they, uh, the idea got so successful from within architects, you know, that environment, that, and, and it spread around the world amongst architects, but eventually it overflowed into the creatives. And uh, so what it is, in, in a really simple sense, uh, it's a formula. You have to sign a contract with the Jap Japan group, the Japanese group that have started this concept. Right now there's 450 some cities around the world that are actually have engaged in contractually. No money is involved, but you basically, well, there are monies involved in the sense of for yourself to put it on. But in terms of with the originators of this concept, in terms of branding, you had to follow a certain formula. And that formula is pretty clear cut. It's the 20 by 20 rule. So 20 slides, 20 seconds. And uh, in our case, the way we put it on, we contracted out right to a contractor that would orchestrate this evening. We did 10 of these. And the evenings unfolded this way. They would identify, you know, we'd put out advertise and who has ideas, who has stories to share. Uh, she would collect all of these uh, ideas and concepts and then would make a decision, maybe choose about 12, decide which way they might come because she would become aware of which stories, what would be a high point, low point, whatever. And really the, the beauty of this formula is that the audience comes to discover uh, creatives and ideas and you know things they would have never thought about. And it's so short as a 20 by 20 that if you're bored to death, on one that got speaking, you knew, well, well, this one will disappear in two seconds, <laughs> and the next one will appear. Yeah. And it created this yeah. nice dynamic. And then the formula demanded that you make a break in the evening 
And then all of a sudden, everybody, wow, I like yeah. Don, I liked what you said, and I like, you know, so this, this excitement. And then you went back and heard some more. Beautiful formula. I, I highly uh, uh, recommend it to anybody. Any city out in British Columbia, it is a beautiful formula to discover the artist in everybody's mind because it, it didn't just aim for artists. It aimed for anyone that had a creative, an imagination they wanted to share. And uh, so it was very successful. So out of it came, yes, we, we were, what we did is we approached the community TV group at the time, and we've done this in all of our 10 to record and archive these for us and for the organizers, in this case of the Arts Connect. Now I'm wearing two hats, right? Yeah. Both from the Tri-Cities side now, mm -hmm. uh, Tri-Cities community TV side, but also from an Arts Connect perspective, it is now material and content mm -hmm. for our TV program that goes to air. Right. That's one, one example. But the other kind of archives we are, we have are physical documents that, are, that showed the protocol and the communication and the evolution of each respective cities and municipalities, villages, in terms of how they viewed art, how they viewed uh, uh, culture. And we were often asked to come in and give feedback on this. As recent, uh, recently, I was invited by a consultant Coquitlam's going through a massive, right now, a strategic planning around culture. Right. So they brought in the various peoples that they felt could help these consultants to guide them, map out in their own minds, and what best way could Coquitlam, which has a challenge of its own. It's a vast city, right? It's large territory. Uh, you got smaller cities like Port Coquitlam, Port Moody, a little tighter, smaller population. So they're ahead of the game in terms of a sense of self, sense of belonging, right? Sense of identity. Coquitlam, its challenge is a vast terrain, vast, right? So well, one of the of things these. I wanted to talk about was you are part of the Tri-Cities Community Television yes. Society. Yes. And you, your show airs on Shaw Channel 4 and also on Novus. Do you know what channel that is on Novus? Oh, not Novus, uh, TELUS, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Optic Channel. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know it offhand right now. We did What we did is we had one program with them. It was a separate program. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, I'll put the hat on of Tri-Cities Community TV just for a sec. We have two programs that goes to air on Shaw, and right. one of them is called Tri-Cities Magazine. And the more recent one where we did a soft launch last year uh, and leading up to this year, soft launch last year, was it's called Arts Connect. And this year it's ongoing now and we're developing it. And what Arts Connect and Tri-Cities Community TV did is they formed a partnership. Uh, both, both entities separate have found that they have common ground on that very issue of storytelling, story, you know, story development. So coming back to what I was telling you about our archives, we felt now that uh, we are no longer into the immediate service delivery of the various entities in our region now from an Arts Connect perspective. We've evolved to realize that now we can deepen the notion of art and culture, and the way to do it is through the communications medium. And in our case, the community television is the perfect medium because I know it well. I used to do programming. I was in production years ago. Uh, and then uh, all of a well, sudden- you were Rogers Van East. Uh, you were a Rogers volunteer at some point. Yes, yes. At one point, there was a beautiful studio, uh, really well equipped, much like this one actually. At, you know, with, with the state of the art of the day, and it was along Kingsway in Port Coquitlam. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I. Uh, and this I owe was my one love. of the. This is one of the studios uh, Rogers shut down in the late nineties. Yes, correct? yes, to a to a dramatic effect from the point of view of that region because it. It had a real, you know, there was a lot of involvement. People could come in there, tell their stories. The whole beauty of community television and, and what it was uh, meant to do and seems to have resulted in was to get people to tell their stories. Right. And uh, it empowered them, right? And it gave this, this ability of communities to, to discover themselves, right? And in our case, at a regional level, you can imagine how beautiful that was. So when Coquitlam came in, like for instance, I, I ended up producing, and you know, I was director of one program called the Chamber of Commerce, Chamber right. Review it was called. And I also did the 100th anniversary of Coquitlam. Right. There I got to see the community coming in, the politicians, all, you know, the community organizations, as they came in to celebrate who they were. Beautiful, beautiful. And then 
it disappears. So what, what kind of impact did that have on the area when that studio was taken away? Well, I think it created a vacuum. Yeah. Uh, what, what it was is the, there was still this potential ability to go to a central place somewhere immediately. You know, at first it was a closing down. It was very subtle. We, we didn't even understand what was going on at the time, right? There was kind yeah. of an explanation. No, it's not really, we're not really giving up. At the time, what you know, you'll still be able to do production, but it was like further away, harder to get at. Yeah. Because at first, look, there was that studio, there was a neighborhood production office right in Coquitlam that was the larger population. So the the design of Community TV was brilliant, mm -hmm. and uh, and it did it did ignite that kind of things we need as a community, right? To to create the the harmony and create this this connection, the cohesiveness, right? right? Because that's what's missing. I mean, look at us today. I'll give you an example. When I left this morning, I was thinking about here I am in the suburbs, and I'm going to the big city. And how how disconnected is the big city to this region and vice versa? And I thought, there's something not healthy about this. We we need to. And the reason I I, I was wanted to come even today and it's as what we will be doing from an arts connect perspective we we as a regional arts council we're realizing we need to come and get this city to explore who we are what we do we, we're interconnected we have mutual interests all of us right and so that's the larger community and community tv and this is why i'm here today i, I can bring some of this thinking some of this that comes from there. Some, there's real innovation going on over there. Yeah, well, let's talk about what, what Tri Cities Community Television Society is doing right now. Like, you've, oh, you've, it's just, got a, it's you've just got a grant from TELUS to. Oh, yeah, yeah. To, uh, it, yes. So, are you building a studio? Is that the idea? Well, or? the big dream initially, even to the point that in our case, what we're doing is building incrementally a. a, a a way to tell our story, right, in our region. Mm -hmm. So the Tri-Cities Community TV has, through beautiful efforts of volunteers and a group that basically understood the importance. So for the last six, probably 10 years for some, but the last six years, incrementally and gradually, uh, some funding mm -hmm. finally was coming from within our region. This is your real signal that it's and answering And this is a need. lot of thanks to Jeff Scott, who's oh, done yeah, Jeff, some tremendous work out there. Jeff, yes, has done uh, a Mission Impossible. As a matter of fact, I can tell you how I got involved in Tri-Cities Community TV. I had been, as I mentioned a while ago, right, going to the Rogers Studios, and I, then it disappears, and then I figured, that's it. Okay, we'll never hear again about this. And then years later, I see this article in the newspaper, our local paper, and this young man's got a camera yes. and very well done and he's basically saying, I'm calling for a public meeting and I'm thinking, what is this guy? Is he he's, first of all he looks so young. Yeah. You know, Jeff to begin with. <laughs> perpetually I just, young. I just yeah. yeah, perpetually young. Yeah. I discovered he's married and children the whole yeah. bit. But at the time I'm looking at it and says, Wow, is he what planet is this guy living on? Yeah. And what happened is, is I went to the meeting, and guess what? To my amazement, there was about 16 people around this first meeting, young, every age group, and sure enough, a hungry to tell stories. And that told me, wow. So I, I then brought in my own past experiences, and by then I had learned the governance part of organizations. So I, I offered that energy there to help out from a governance-related sense and from a story development point of view. Jeff, of course, with his whole large background, right, technical producer, uh, teacher at the time, right, the Columbia Academy, uh, he brought in all of this understanding also of what community TV was. As a matter of fact, he's giving back to that because he went in the industry. Mm -hmm. He owes his whole industry experience with the love he got from community TV, right. which, which is really uh, what's a shame a bit that that's not there anymore because that was the key even what's happening in this studio right now, which, you know, yourself and some of the volunteers are around this table uh, and around this set, t for me, it, it desperately is needed more and more now, you know, as we accelerate everything around us, telling stories. And so in our case over there, yes, uh, to get back to what you were asking, tell us uh, it didn't come about very quickly, right? We were, the way we're living it out there from a Tri-Cities community television point of view is the cities themselves 
uh, you know, uh, first of all, the, the first one to really understand what we're doing was the Coquitlam Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a foundation and basically trying to grasp what we're doing, seeing the value of it and their own efforts, funded a segment of a program that was going to air as long as for them, because it was a Coquitlam based foundation, said, look, if you can do some art, now you'll see where Arts Connect comes into the picture a bit of great interest is, it said, if you can do a segment on arts about Coquitlam, we're prepared to give you some money. So they did, and then uh, Jeff Scott and the Tri-Cities became a poster child for the Coquitlam Foundation. They were so happy about the results. Then what we did is incrementally, as a, again, the Tri-Cities Community TV, all of a sudden Port Moody was nearing its 100th anniversary and said, hey, uh, we got $10,000 here if you could cover all of our celebrations during the year. So <laughs> snapped it up, right, and did a great job on that. And, and eventually the other cities, and you might know that in that region, you know, one city looks at the other and the way the region has survived in a way is through the, what was called the Simon Fraser formula. So as per population, if one city does something, the other city comes in and weighs in and says, okay, I'll give my share, my proportion. And for years, this city has, or in this region has created an interesting synergy. And, uh, but then the, what I call the critical mass of each city started where they had to start focusing on their respective place and, and that's where it's at now. So as we move forward from a community television point of view, th all the cities there value tremendously the service that's being rendered by this community TV group because they're seeing their stories, they're seeing their voices, they're seeing the mirror of themselves and that's what again what community TV was all about, right? The, the, you're not going to find that in the mainstream media, right? Because it flies over the whole region, right? The mainland, let alone each city. So it's a focus on cities and what it means. Sense of place, sense of belonging, sense of identity. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the essence of what Community TV is about and Tri-Cities Community TV. And in our case, guess what? That's why we start seeing the, you know, the parallels. Arts Connect with its sense as a regional arts council, same kind of challenge. How do you get at the sense of place, sense of belonging, right, of a region? In our case, we, in terms of projects, we've identified very clearly. Ro uh, Roger, yep. uh, we're running out of time. I thought there was, I was going to have a whole bunch of stuff to <laughs> ask you questions about, but we're running out of time so quickly. Just uh, if people want to contact you, how can they get in touch with you? Well, definitely through our websites, uh, and the respective websites that I represent. So I can show that. Yeah, minicata.ca yeah. and then the other one, the Tri Cities Community TV dot org dot com, and of course ArtsConnect dot TV. Okay. And because we have now taken on this whole production uh, approach to uh, our role in this week. Well, I want to thank you very much. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but thank you for uh, oh, joining me today. And that was and we'll invite to have you. Vancouver to come to our region one day and have this kind of conversation. Yeah, in that reverse. would be awesome. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.